Hi, guys. Welcome to Real Food Recovery. This is episode 38, and we are so excited about this one. It's all about who validates you. But first, I want to say hi to my cohort, Jamie. How's it going? I'm good, Paige. Glad to be here always. I am glad you are here too. Thank so you. I think you guys are going to love this one. And there's so much good information. If you want to play along like Jamie and I are speaking directly to you and put your feedback and comments in, in the comment section, I think it'll be a fun time. So let's go ahead and start talking about this. And you might even wonder, why are we talking about validation on a recovery podcast? Well, back in episode 23, Jamie was sharing with us about the four steps to emotional processing. Number one was notice. So identify and become aware of our feelings. Number two was allow the ability to accept your feelings in order to process them. Number three was explore, which is understanding why you feel the way you do and begin to observe it. And then finally, validate. We found that topic of validation was so crucial that it was worth spending more time on, especially... Mm -hmm. Because as humans, one of our most basic needs is just to know that someone hears us and what we have to say is important. Even if the other person doesn't necessarily agree with our stance, just knowing that we are heard matters. I don't know if you all that are listening have ever had a situation where you just simply felt better because someone was willing to listen to you even if it, there wasn't a solution. So you might call it just getting it off my chest. I know for me, yes, people don't always agree with me, but if they're willing to listen to what I have to say as if it's important to them, that helps. That helps a lot. So we, Jamie and I have actually had a couple of conversations where our views might have been slightly different but I always know that she is listening to me, to what I have to say and vice versa. And I have to uh, brag on Jamie a little bit. She will hang in there in a conversation and keep going over and over it till we get to a place, a symbiotic place. And ne she's never impatient about it. She just always is willing to hear me and she will not stop it till she makes sure I'm comfortable with the outcome. So I have never really met anybody that that was, was that high level of a communicator. And it's just, it's a miracle to watch. Actually, she's amazing. Thank you. So you're very welcome. You. So just like I said, knowing the other guy is compassionate as to how you feel, it changes everything for me. And you leave the conversation with the doors of communication still open. So that's another big one. My friend Jennifer and I play tennis every Friday morning. And um, as a side tip, I keep one of my favorite workouts till the end of the week to keep me motivated. So <laughs> Jennifer and I were in the middle of this game, heated game, you know, we, we, we <laughs> leave everything on the line in there. This rich, snooty, entitled lady walks in while we are in the middle of this game and had the nerve to say, you guys need to be off in five minutes because that's when we start. I was appalled. I could not believe that someone had the nerve. We pay for our court time to come in and stop our game and let us know that she didn't want us infringing on her, her time that started in five minutes minutes. So I went to the director's office. I told him what had just happened. He listened to my rant and he said he would talk to her. Did he? I don't know. He probably just wanted me out of his office, but he said he was going to, but I did feel better having him just listen to me because I was upset. I needed to get it off my chest and I felt better after I left. Although I do still give her the stink eye whenever I pass her. From time <laughs> to time. So clearly I'm not that evolved yet. <laughs> I don't even care. It feels good. You did Squint. you only have five minutes left? And she was yes. just making sure you knew that? Yes. Like in case you couldn't tell time? <laughs> yes. That's... yes. It's that arrogant, rich, uh, you know, I'm better than you. Anyway, she walks around like that just on a daily basis. But I get it. So I, all, rude. I, all, I mean, we don't know, right? We don't know. Maybe she just had to bring her dog into the vet that morning. Who knows? She could have just yeah, been having yeah. a bad day. Yeah, yeah. You're like my friend, Jennifer. She's like... We well, let's just pray for her. I'm like, want to pray for her, <laughs> even though that's what I should be doing. But I didn't feel like it right then. And maybe she's maybe she's not rich. Maybe she's just uh, leveraged to the hilt, and it just looks like wealth. That actually makes me feel better. You say yeah. that. <laughs> I finally do feel better. What do you know? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, a validation. You know, have you ever been in a, a situation 
yes, where I just felt better. Most of the time, um, today, most of the time I'll, I'll go to page. I'll go to certainly go to my husband. There was just a situation last night where I, I called the poor man after 11 o'clock and I was like, I woke him up. <laughs> I was like, I have to talk to you about something that just happened. And, oh, he, no. <laughs> and he was very sweet and very supportive and very, you know, encouraging and, and, um, compassionate. Mm-hmm. And I'm very grateful, you know, not always, not always the case, right. Depending on who I'm walking into in, in, in any situation who I'm talking with. But last night I, I, I had a very compassionate ear. Uh, I found that certainly with you Paige and you flattered me earlier. I, I feel the same about you. You are oh, always thank willing, you. You're always willing to talk things out. You're always willing to listen. You're always willing to let me know, Hey, I have emotion attached to this is, which is most of the time. Or is it no emotion attached? Or sometimes you'll say, hey, I, I do have a, a, a horse in this race and I want to talk it through. Mm-hmm. And you're very open about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, there was a time when I looked to in my life to others to validate my existence. Right. My feelings, my choices, mm-hmm. all of them. I looked to others for all of it. Wow. And I didn't think that I had an original thought or a thought that 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 warranted any kind of um, acceptance by me. I I really thought unless somebody else said good idea, Jamie, that I, I didn't move until I heard from someone else that I was on the right track. Mm -hmm. I would call people constantly for their feedback. It was a knee jerk because I really Mm -hmm. had zero. Um, I had been, you know, the, the, the childhood I had, the experiences I had growing up bullying and everything else in between, I really was taught to not trust my own inner voice and to not trust that, that I could figure out a situation or make a, make a, a responsible decision or a decision that, that would be safe, Mm -hmm. sad, but true. Mm -hmm. That is the reality of how I was raised. Don't you, my my experience. Don't you think it naturally gets better with maturing or no, not always. I think I was a really late bloomer in that space. I mean, I'm talking, I was in my Mm forties before I stopped calling people (laughs) every decision I had to make. I I have said before until I was 30, I didn't even begin to have a clue. And then it, you know, so much change between 20 and 30 and even 30 and 40, but that 20 to 30 big years and 30 to 40, pretty big years too. But 30 is just, I think, the beginning of when people start kind of getting a clue. And then by 40, you're more clued in. And then you just settle down at 50 a little bit is has been my experience. And you you care less about what other (laughs) Yeah, you're so close. Just hang on there. Don't quit. Don't quit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh and then I also I I laugh because um you know, when I, when I did look to others for my source of validation, I, I really, I was relying on them as my, as my God, my idol. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Which mm-hmm. was a, a, as you can say, this is where the problem begins. Right. So mm-hmm. if I, if we as humans don't feel heard or I, or if we feel isolated or alone with our feelings, then these are the situations that we can begin to eat over. And that's what I did. I, I didn't right. trust myself, didn't know who to trust because humans are fallible, classically yeah. fallible. That's the whole mm-hmm. point of that we have. And so, when you have them answer your questions, they don't live with the consequences you do. And they don't have my life experience or my right. perspective on, on the world, or they have their own. So of course mm-hmm. they're not, their advice is going to be skewed maybe right to them, but yes, yeah, skewed, yeah, skewed to their experience. Yeah. So, so when we try to, when I, for me, when I would, I would feel let down by, by humans all the time. And that a lot, a lot of that was from childhood where I was where I was relying on humans to sort of come through and they weren't. But then as an adult, I kind of carried that perspective through forgetting that I was an adult capable of, com- of completely capable of caring for myself and taking, taking uh, mm-hmm. steps towards, towards empowerment in her life. Mm-hmm. But I forgot that mm-hmm. as, you know, as an adult, because I was so used to this place of powerlessness as a child. Um, and I would eat over it. I would eat over failed promises, broken promises. I would get just insanely resentful, filled with resentment and fear and uh, just uncertainty about about others and, and outcomes. Um, and I would use 
food as a, as a way, like you won't ever let me down food. You always mm-hmm. taste this way food. You always mm-hmm. fill me this way food. Um, and our addiction, my addiction really rationalized that we don't have the need for validation, right? Because mm-hmm. we, we can have this full feeling for minutes or hours or whatever mm-hmm. it is and full, like not in a good way, not in a vital nutritious way, but in a, I'm going to numb from this, from the mm-hmm. neck down way. You can't think of anything else when you're that miserably full. Exactly. All you can think about is the stomach ache. Yeah. Or, or the food coma that's coming. Yeah. or I'm fighting off. Um, mm-hmm. or, you know, again, I, I forget that I can tap into happiness by, you know, um, in so many other ways, I look to that tap tapping into happiness as a, as a, the food, right. Providing immediate gratification through that dopamine rush that I get from the food substances. And I'm not talking about an apple. <laughs> I'm talking about donuts or pizzas yeah. or mm-hmm. junk food, you know, so have you Paige, have you ever done this and has it worked for you? Yeah, it works for about 20 minutes and then you <laughs> feel exponentially worse. But yeah, your first option is I'm going to solve this with just X, Y, Z, whatever your drug of choice is food wise at the time. Sure. I totally. And and yes, it does work momentarily, but that's the trick with the addiction, right? Because mm-hmm. addiction doesn't know consequences. We've talked about that before. Mm-hmm. The addiction's job is just to get you out of pain. And it does it well. And in a backwards way, it is trying to protect you. But since the addiction doesn't have the capability of a consequence center located within it, it it's done its job and it will just rear its ugly head, so to speak, whenever you're in that position again. But yes, have I tried it a 1 million times and has it worked 1 million times? Sure. For about 20 minutes, but then it's worse. And the biggest thing that I have worked on in recovery is to not use that immediate gratification. Um, We talk about that when cravings come, we're just wanting that immediate gratification. So Mm -hmm. in recovery, if we can work on impulse control, Mm -hmm. then that is the ultimate gift. That's like the Nirvana, the crescendo of uh, recovery. But whenever we use, uh, I'll I'll speak for myself, whenever I use food to get out of pain, I I am just trying to, I'm not trying to get pleasure. I'm just trying to get out of pain. That's what I was trying to say. Just get back up to even to get rid of the craving because the cravings are painful. Exactly. And so I'm trying to get out of that, that pain drive. Yes. So I'm just, uh, am trying to learn to sit through the discomfort and not turn to food, turn to these recovery skills that I'm developing. Mm-hmm. And guess what? It works. Mm-hmm. So I, um, I'm going to say this big statement that I have again in addiction People are not using their substance of choice to feel good. It's quite the opposite. They are using it to get out of pain. And unfortunately, that's when the trouble starts. That's where the term, I think, using comes from, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. You are literally using it as- Same thing uh, when we hear people using others in relationships. He was a user. She was a user. It's the same thing. They're just looking to those people to help them get out of pain. Yeah. It's the same, same thing. What about Uh, you? you For me, yeah, for me, I did it for 33 years as a food addict, you know, full-blown food addict before I started recovery and then really understood food addiction later, even after that, 10 years later. Uh, And it was horrible because the short-term pain was numbed, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, But only, I mean, I wouldn't even say 20 minutes. I would say it's minutes, sometimes even while I was eating it. (laughs) You're very efficient. (laughs) You are very efficient. (laughs) I I was shaming myself. I'm exceptionally... I'm, I'm an Olympic, <laughs> Olympic status. I'm going to send you a gold medal. <laughs> yes. Trophies. But it's, yeah. Oh, I'm very quick to say, oh, what are you doing? And then just get right down on myself. Mm-hmm. So I have to be very, very careful to, um, to understand that it is a very short time. Um, and after that is just more pain, more heartache. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a cycle. It's tough to get out. Have you ever been on those roundabouts in Europe? Well, I guess anywhere. Yes. It's, you, they're tough to get on, but they're real tough to get off too. You got to be real careful. And yes. people are spinning around that sucker like a top. Yes. So Yes. Yes. My, my husband and I always laugh because we love European vacation and 
when yes. Mark Griswold yes. gets caught. Exactly. With his little kids, Big Ben Parliament, like, and like, you know, for hours. Times, for hours. Yeah. And every time we get lost, which is more often than you'd think. Yeah. My husband and I are in the car together. We're trying to find our way somewhere and we'll take a wrong turn every time my husband will will use that line. So yes. That, but that's you know what? what it is like. It is. And and I it is like that. And I, I didn't know when I was eating until really the last few years of my real true addiction that the, we're talking like minutes of of pleasure for hours or days or yes. some weeks of pain. Yes. I mean, once I, yes. once I realized that ratio, I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's what just an invitation pain. Come get me for sure. Yes. You know, Jamie, you really explained well in episode 23 about your thoughts around validation. Do you care to just do a quick overview of yeah. that? Because it was so good. Yeah. And this was, uh, was that the paradise by the by the dashboard lights? Was that episode twenty three? You know, I don't know, but you know what that that paradise by the dashboard lights is zooming to number one of all of our podcasts. Just in case you guys want to catch that one, ah. I to, I, maybe I can look it up real it fast. Is. That is episode twenty three. Okay, well then, <laughs> there we go. So it, the episode twenty three, paradise by the dashboard lights, mo- not... most popular episode so far. Isn't that interesting? Even mm-hmm. surpassing be your own guru. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. it's not an homage to meatloaf formally, but it is an homage <laughs> to meatloaf, not the food, but the artist, <laughs> the artist formerly known as meatloaf because he's no longer with us, yeah. but, um, I digress, but yeah. we, we named that episode because part of being a human is to experience a wide variety of emotions from happiness and gratitude to sadness, anger, and fear. It's completely natural. The, the, the human, that is, that is the human experience, right? Right not to be led by emotions, but to have them. Right. Oh, good point. And in the same way we say we have company, like we experience company, we host, we experience, we maybe feed them and send them home. That is, that's the the phrase of having company. The same phrase, the same word applies, have, having emotions. We host them. Brilliant. get to know them we we don't feed them with food we you know feed them with validation of other kinds and then we allow them to leave Mm -hmm. it's the same kind of thing they're just it's a it's a emotions are part of life and and they're part of feeling alive it opens up the experience of comforting right which is what heavy emotional pain needs it needs comfort and guess what the comfort can't really can't come from outside of us it has to come from, yeah. from us essentially mm-hmm. outside you know outside sources can help but it really does need to come from us and it also validation um if if we experience our pain as valid we can open ourselves up to being gentle kind and loving instead of shaming ourselves mm-hmm. and saying well, what's wrong with me why am i feeling this right. way I, I'm, I'm not feeling this way i'm i know i'm really angry but i'm not angry that's just adding more resistance on top of the anger Mm-hmm. Um, what we need is, is really comforting. Um, and that's the message of that emotional pain. Like it's a dashboard light. Mm-hmm. It's the dashboard lights, the lights coming on saying, Hey, I need attention. I need validation. Mm-hmm. I need comforting. And that's why we titled that, that episode paradise by the dashboard lights, because it really is paradise. Once we figure out that these emotions are not there to run our lives and they're not there to make other people have to change their, their will for us. These emotions are there so that we can pay attention to them and comfort them and validate them. Well, this is probably why that episode was so popular because this is good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. We got a lot of meatloaf fans out there. Yeah. So we were talking in (laughs) one of at, at real food recovery this morning in one of our daily connections hours about emotions and our inner family. And somebody was like, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to, D- you know, delve into that inner family. You know, we just want to do the adult thing and, and sweep it under the carpet. The problem is it gets crowded in the living room. <laughs> and so, the like a yeah, <laughs> yeah. The carpet is starting to form a mound <laughs> yeah. and it's harder to vacuum. So yeah. that, that, uh, I mean, we were just being funny, silly, yeah. but 
that that's why we deal with them. So we don't have to bury them. We can just move them on out of the living Everything room. Everything I swept under the carpet didn't fit in in seats anymore. Or couldn't ride <laughs> rides and roller coasters and <laughs> had to buy bigger cars and bigger size clothes. Yeah. Everything that I swept under the carpet just did not work out well. It made me you. bigger. Yeah. So then it begs the question, if we are looking to comfort our emotions through validation, what does that look like for each of you in your life? And again, I we want you that are listening to participate and think about this question too. If if you're looking to comfort, if you're looking to comfort your emotions through validation, what does that look like in your life? So, you know, for me, my first instinct is to look at a validation as an inside job and just knowing that I'm right about a situation. Okay. So that helps. And it really stings if the other guy doesn't see it the same way, but part of adulting is accepting <laughs> that this is a part of life and not everybody's going to agree with me all the time, but I comfort myself by having a heart to heart with myself. And I, I just try to talk it through that invites compassion for myself. I'm able to pat myself on the back and say, good job and, and be at ease. But through maturing in recovery, I have experienced a deeper love from the, from external validation. And it is sublime, but I'm learning to share when I have an emotion and the feedback is so comforting. So usually I just did not say anything, but like, I will come to you. You gave me some good advice the other day on an issue I was having. So that external validation, of course, it's nice, but the real bottom line stuff does have to come from within. Ironically, I when I was working on this episode, I had just gotten home from a very difficult funeral, highly emotional. It was uh, my brother-in-law who was only 61. He was, it was a tragic loss, suffering, uh, a lot of suffering from our family, seeing my sister and, and being so upset from the, the loss of her husband and my dad in pain, trying to comfort my sister. I mean, it very, very distressful. So I actually reached out to Jamie on the way home and I was uh, telling her about these charged emotions that I was experienced, plus all the processed food afterwards that you typically find at yeah. a funeral. And I was telling her how I did get through it, but I'm feeling a little wobbly here. I just want yeah. to tell somebody. So, you know, that that's a way of a little bit of external validation. I recognize I was validating myself, but a little bit of reinforcements yeah. at this time would have not hurt. So I just want to share with those of you that are listening, what she texted me. This was so brilliant. I have saved it and kept it in my phone. She, I, I, I explained the situation to her via text and she wrote back and said, just remember to spend some time with you tonight. Give your inner family some time to grieve and reflect on preparing them for tomorrow. Tell them you are in charge of them and you won't hurt them by allowing them to give into the food. And I, that was such a game changer for me. There was so much nobility in that message. It was an honorable calling to protect my emotions from harm. I instantly relaxed and turned from victim of emotions to standing guard by protecting exactly. them from damage. That is a role I flourish in being a protector, <laughs> but I had never thought of it in those terms, the way she put it to me. And it seemed like a motherly thing to do. Again, a role I'm comfortable with. It was a language. She put it in a way. It was a language I could understand. And because I had such a positive experience being vulnerable with someone about how I was feeling, I thought, well, I just might do this again. This really felt good. It was so relieving versus in the past, I would have not mentioned it. I would have just <laughs> stuffed that sucker down <laughs> and just gutted it out. So Jamie gave such good advice. She may have to block my number at some point, but <laughs> if she keeps getting, giving good advice, that's really that, that one's on her, but <laughs> seriously, a total shift from how I used to deal with validation, both work, both, both worked for me, but this, this is much better. Again, connection is the opposite of addiction. It's just yes. where comfort and peace abide. Yes. And if anyone wants, thank you, Paige, for those really sweet words. If anyone wants to get that same kind of support, this is what we do all day yeah, long. In our on the reg. Exactly. In our real food recovery community, guys, there's, there's, there's four Jamie's. I'm, I'm just one of the four <laughs> that we yeah. all have. We all have, have a, a lot of coaching expertise and mm -hmm. very similar, very similar styles. So uh, if that's something that sounds like, gosh, that's 
that's something I need. Yeah. Check us out at realfoodrecoveryforyou.com. Even us as coaches have gone, wow, I, I'm even progressing and, and growing too. We, we have so much fun in our community. It's yes, a blast. We really do. It's a lot of fun. Um, we, you know, for me, thank you really. Again, I, I, I didn't know that those words stuck with you. And as I was prepping oh, this yeah. episode, I skimmed this section and I saw that last part of that you write about my text, tell them you're in charge of them, your feelings mm-hmm. and, and those in your parts and you won't hurt them by allowing them to give into the food. I missed the part above that said that I sent that to you. And as I read that, I thought, God, that's really good. <laughs> Whoever wrote that is really wise. That is hysterical. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Toot, toot. That was yeah. me. That was, that, that was that's me. really funny. <laughs> well, yeah. So, but you know, here's the thing, my inner family experience, and that's what, we, what we've seen with our members and, and you mentioned yeah. it, but I experience it. Mm-hmm. Our members are now starting to experience it. Their inner yeah. families, when they realize that they're the only ones coming to save their inner family, yeah. mm-hmm. especially the, the really devoted parents and mamas in our group. Mm-hmm. and they like they get it they're like that's a role I know what to do with I'm there mm-hmm. like I mm-hmm. let me add like I will protect my inner yeah. family I protected my little my little ones growing up yeah. um so yeah I I really I, I've done a good job of protecting my inner family and validating them but I'll say that the, I had to learn how to do that like I've I have read books with titles called what's normal like <laughs> out of being an adult because I was, I love them, but I was essentially raised by, by many versions of children, right? Adult mm-hmm. children. And, and, and not all, and not every day, not, in, not 24 seven, but mm-hmm. there was a lot of adult childishness happening in the home that I was raised in the homes that I was in. So um, it's, it's, it is what it is. And so it's really important for me to understand that I don't know what's healthy and normal. And I had, I had to learn and I'm learning every day what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I found a lot of validation in my religious practice, you know, prayer and, and reading of, of devotionals and scripture that helped me understand what God thinks of me and, mm-hmm. and his validation, what that is to me. That's very important. Um, and don't you think when we recognize that our feelings are valid, that it opens up the door to courage? Maybe it gives you the strength to stand up for yourself. Yeah. And before I answer that, I went, I was thinking about, you know, what I said before that I am starting to learn to enjoy external validation. But so I should have uh, said, there's a caveat to that. Make sure that whoever you're going to, to talk to is a valid source, a reliable source. Yes. I, I don't, I should have said, I should have mentioned that I make sure if I'm going to someone for some external validation, they are vetted <laughs> highly. I yeah. mean, equal to myself. So I just wouldn't go. Guard your heart. Don't let the people, don't let everyone close to it. There yeah. should be, you're talking, you might have two people in your life. Yeah, totally, totally. Your and it. when I say vetting somebody to give you validation, that's a long history of exposure to somebody. It's not the guy at the produce market or the postman. That's yeah. not it. I'm just saying someone who I've had a long standing relationship with that Horrible I can see. With. Yes, that I can see has been consistent, reliable, dependable, making good decisions in their own life. And I, I re- respect where they're moving. So I, I should have said that before. But mm-hmm. okay, getting back to the question when you said about um, do we recognize that our feelings are valid, that it opens up the door to courage and gives you strength to stand up for yourself. In the past, or my younger self, when I was when I was told what to feel and think, I just went with a program. That's the kind of kid I was obedient. I, I didn't even think I had a choice, but to follow along, probably out of fear of getting in trouble or disappointing a partner or not wanting to create a stir, because I, I don't like problems. I, I I shy away from that probably a little too much, but especially as a child, you just go with what your parents tell you and you don't question it. I always assumed that that is what I was supposed to think too. whatever my parents thought political, religious, whatever, then that's what I'm supposed to think too. But a turning point for me is when I started having my own opinions and was able to back up what I thought with, with back up with rationale 
then I was able to reason and articulate how I felt and why. And I learned to trust myself enough that my opinion was the most important because I had to live with my decisions. So mm -hmm. uh, becoming an, this adult process, thinking it out, talking it out, being able to explain my stance, yes. that gives me the confidence to stand up for my conviction and it invites peace of mind because I'm able to answer any question that someone may come at me because I've already thought it through thoroughly. So I feel very confident in my position. Now, that's not to say I'm not willing to listen to others' positions. Jamie and I had a situation recently that I felt pretty strongly in my position, but I just kept listening to her and listening to her and listening to her. I was still open to what she had to say. And ultimately she was, she was right. And, but going into it, I thought I have a solid reason for what I think. But that I think it's, that's huge to be open to listen and it will just get you further faster than anything else. And it, yeah. And it, and for me, it's, it's really not about being right. It's about, it's about talking through to understand what, if there's a way that I'm not looking at something. So I always, if I always tell myself, if somebody's coming back, like in that situation, you were coming back and saying, James, I have this concern and I have this concern. And what about this? Have you thought about mm -hmm. this? And I was like, okay, if she's coming back, it's because there's something I, she's looking at this from angles that I haven't seen yet. So I need to yeah. look at these angles too. Mm -hmm. I had to keep an open mind and say, it's not about being right. It's about, let me just make sure, like, I, I have a real strong gut on this, but let me make sure that what I'm thinking of and, and feeling is looked at from all the angles. Yeah. And once we did look at it from all the angles, then we were both able to see that it, it was the best decision to, to, to go in my direction, but it wasn't, who cares whose direction it was by, the, by that. Point. Yeah. I, what I appreciated is that you were thinking of a direction I hadn't thought of. Mm. You had a point that I'm like, okay, that's right. That's now, now I see it clearly, but I love that we were each validating with in our own self, but at the same time, still open to hearing learning. I wanted to learn. I, 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 I want to be right, but I have to gather all the information in order to stay correct and keep the best interest of everyone involved. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I think about opening up the door to vulnerability. It, it, that's first for me, opening up the door to vulnerability allows courage. Vulnerability is the action of courage for me. So yeah. that's, you know, when I think about this episode, I want to leave us with a few key points. Paige, what's the first key point? Validation communicates that a relationship is important and solid, even when two parties disagree. And I think we've given a few um, a few examples yes. of that. Using validation effectively begins with being present, both with one's own emotions as well as honoring the other person's. Uh, being uncomfortable with emotions may lead one to inadvertently invalidate another person's experience. Yeah. So like an example of that is if I was uncomfortable with my emotions, meaning that I had a resentment, why doesn't she understand what I'm trying to say? Why can't <laughs> she hear me? Uh, she's, you know, she's just being a, a pill about this situation. And, and, you know, and then I'm going to think of all those other situations that she's been a pill and I'm just going to have... So I'm not uncomfortable with, I'm, un, I'm not comfortable with my own emotions. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting my own resistance about what is onto her making whatever we're dealing with worse. Yeah, totally. So that's how that, that's how that works. That's how, mm -hmm. you know, when, when we're not okay with ourselves, we don't take the time to validate our own emotions and we're looking for them, for others to validate our emotions for us, we get to be very resentful because it's like, why aren't they seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah. Why aren't they doing what I'm doing? And that's exactly with the example we were talking about before that I just was open to learning and I was, I, I wanted to absorb as much information, exactly. just honest, honestly open to learning more. Exactly. So that's one, uh, the last point here, key point validation is never about lying or simply agreeing with someone else, but rather understanding their point of view. So Brene yeah. Brown has a beautiful way of looking at this. She talks about, um, you know, empathy, empathy is not saying I've been where you are. Empathy is being willing to say, I, I will be here and hold your hand while you're experiencing this. And, and I, I will say, this is, this is hard. That's empathy. Yeah. Empathy is validation is a, is a, is an action of empathy. Mm -hmm. Validation is, is really, it's not about 
saying, oh, I, I've been where you are. I Maybe you haven't. And maybe maybe validation is, is a form of saying, I don't know what it's like to experience what you're experiencing. Yeah. But I'm going to sit here and honor it with you by honor your emotions, by just holding your hand here or saying, gosh, this must be hard. Mm-hmm. If you need anything, call or whatever, or I don't know what to say. Yeah. I don't know what to do, but mm-hmm. I'm here. Right. Yeah. Those are all examples of validation because you're saying to the other person, wow, you're, you're going through is bigger than I have experience yeah. with, mm-hmm. but I, I'm willing to roll with you. Yeah. So validation is a recognition and acceptance of another person's thoughts, feelings, sensations, and behaviors as understandable. Yeah. Right? The first step in empathy, mm-hmm. self-validation, which is what we do with our inner family work and self-leadership work. Self-validation is the recognition and acceptance of our own thoughts, feelings, sensations, and behaviors as understandable and even real, right? First, mm-hmm. I would say real. Are they real? Yes, they're real. They, mm-hmm. they have every much right uh, to hold space in our lives as as other people's thoughts, sensations, yeah. and feelings. That's right. Learning how to use validation effectively takes practice. It's a skill set like anything else. And we hope through this discussion, you can utilize it more in your own recoveries. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I love this discussion, don't you? Yeah. It's Big a, stuff. It's a Big stuff. We have a few listener questions. So let's go through those. And the first one is I am trying to be less selfish or self-involved, but how do I show up for people? This may seem obvious to some, but it doesn't come naturally to me, but I am willing to work on it. So our answer is we have a very easy peasy place for you to start. And by the way, I don't want to overlook the fact that you are aware and reaching out for help. Big, big one right there. You are off to a good start. So just being present for people is where you begin holding someone's hand when they are having a a painful medical treatment, listening with your whole mind and doing nothing but listening to a child describe their first day in, in first grade and going to a friend's house at midnight to sit with her while she cries because a supposed friend told lies about her. Those are all examples of just being present. Yes multitasking while you listen to your teenager's story about their soccer game is not being present. So being present means giving all your attention to the person you are validating, even if you don't know what to say. And it's okay to say, I I don't know what to say here. And, and sometimes I'm just sorry can be enough. We, We have friends that, that lost a child recently. And there have been many times that I, I, I have no words. I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine and just saying, I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm here if there's anything I can do. And, and they can feel, they know when you're genuine. They're so you're authentic about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just want to add to that really quickly because it's a, it's a good topic. So we talked about it. I talked about it a lot just a few minutes ago, mm-hmm. but you know, empathy, when I think of this, my husband says to me, Often he'll, he'll say, you know, empathy is not really in my wheelhouse. It's not something I do naturally, <laughs> which I don't think is, is a, is a far cry for a lot of men. I think a lot of, a lot of men who are raised in very, you know, masculine or, or the, the paradigm of masculinity, they're raised to not, to not acknowledge emotions and to, to kind of not talk about them and not really mm-hmm. deal with feelings. And, and there's, I'm not here to have a political discussion. I'm just observing that that is, that is a trend I agree. In, in that world. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but um, there are times as men age, uh, at least my husband, as he's getting older, he's realizing that I, I would like to have some, some empathy in t- at times and how can I access that more? And I, for him, I, I tell him, you do have empathy. You have a lot of empathy. You don't, I wouldn't have married you if you had no empathy because you would be a narcissist. Right. (laughs) And you, you, you have a lot of it, but you're not always available to yourself to access it. Mm. AKA you're not always available to be present Mm -hmm. when he's present. And in the moment he has a lot of empathy. He knows exactly what to say. It's Mm -hmm. when it's when folks are distracted or they're trying to multitask or they're, they've got a screen in their hand or a screen in their face and, and they're not, they're not really present with someone, how could they ever open themselves up to, to what the right thing to say is, or to God guiding them in that moment? There's mm-hmm. no way they could. Mm-hmm. So it's not about the person, the person's lack of 
empathetic programming as much as it is just not being open to the sunlight of the spirit. Yeah. Good. Good one. You want to, you're on a roll, man. Yeah. How do you do the next one? Yeah. How do you let someone know you're validating them? I know this is what I'm supposed to do, but I don't know exactly what it looks like. So again, valid, you know, we don't want to, we don't need to say I'm validating you right now. (laughs) You You know, you just guess what? All validation is, is being seen, heard, and understood feeling seen, heard, and understood. That is what validation is. So if I am seeing someone, if I am reflecting to them, active listening, saying, I heard you say this, that's Mm -hmm. hearing them. If I'm attempting to understand, oh, I I can, I can see how that would make you feel blank. Mm -hmm. All of those things are validation. That that's it. That there's the, it, it comes back to the presence. It comes back to listen, active listening. It comes back to even summarizing or just empathizing with them verbally, a hug, a shoulder to cry on a high five, a big cheer, whatever. That's, that's the validation. And guess what? That is what our inner families crave from us as, as our loving, you know, our inner loving parent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got one more last one. How do I know who to go to for validation? Mm. What if I make a mistake and get advice from the wrong person? Well, we covered that a little bit, but it's a good point and maybe worth repeating some of this, but know thy resources. One of the skills we acquire in life is dialing into who are credible resources in what area our needs are. So I, I made a joke about the produce man. Don't go to him for life <laughs> advice. But if I know want to know which peaches are the best, he, he, he's your he's, guy. He, yeah, he's my guy. So <laughs> one of them, uh, one of the good uh, qualities is, are they a good sounding board? As mm-hmm. we've talked about, validating yourself is the first source of greatest importance, but it is very nice to have someone else to bounce things off of. It's a skill set. It's born out of experience to recognize another person's agenda. For example, the funeral I was talking about earlier and being surrounded by processed food after, I could have talked to 99 people in that room who would have just said, just relax. You've had a hard day. Just enjoy yourself. You're upset. You deserve it. So my point is when you look outside of yourself, Mm -hmm. be very careful whose wisdom you choose to take on. And quite frankly, we already know what that person we choose is going to say before we ever talk to them. That's why we chose them. So our our subconscious is already working on who to go to. So vet your resources, as I mentioned earlier, or rely, just basically rely on trustworthy sources, which is why I turned to Jamie that day, because I knew she would be safe and give me sage advice. And you know what? I made it through the rest of that day just fine. Mm. Yeah. Well, and, and thank you. And that's the, that's the whole idea of how we grow in recovery. Like we try lots of trial and error, lots of learning. It's not failure. It's just learning and moving on. That's it. It's it's, mistakes are are opportunities for growth. That's all Mm -hmm. learning experiences. Yeah. I've said often, I don't mind mistakes. I mind if you don't learn from them when and and you're just (laughs) repeat 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 that that's Mm -hmm. where the problems are right yeah this was great this was a good one i really like doing this good episode good episode we hope you guys got a lot out of it as always follow us at realfoodrecoveryforyou.com sign up for our email list find us on any of the social media platforms page thank you for your time and thank you for all you do to prepare this to prepare this episode Mm -hmm. lots of our episodes most of our episodes page prepares guys. Uh, I've had people say, you guys sound like you script things. We don't necessarily script it word for word, but Paige does a lot of production be- behind <laughs> the scenes before we record. So thank you for all It's a time. labor of love. I enjoy doing it. And if you are looking for an online food addiction recovery community, please check out our website that Jamie had mentioned at realfoodrecoveryforyou.com. And we are making big, big leaps forward with people in their work there. So it's, that has been a real joy to us to see people grow and progress. So, Mm -hmm. okay, guys, we'll see you next time at real food recovery. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.